you know, sports was always big for me growing up. My mom, she, she uh, started me and my, my younger brother into football uh, as early as seven years old, flag football. And um, yeah, I, mean, I think it helped mold me into who I am today. Um, the team, being a team game and uh, teaching you about hard work, working as a team, all those little things that are important for a young child. I feel like it was, it was major for me. Did you play on defense in flag? I did, man. Yeah, I've always been. How'd you get on with not hitting in flag? Yeah, you know, flag, man, it's, it's good. It teaches you angles and uh, you know, <laughs> get low, grab the flag. Um, it's just so fun, man, playing at, at, at such a young age, and then obviously working to, in the tackle and all of this stuff. And I always gravitated to the sport and defense. Um, defense for man, just whatever reason, uh, you, you can go out there, you can control how many plays you make every single every single time you're out there. So that's why I love. I've always loved defense. So a lot of sports, uh, were you in a competitive family? Was mm -hmm. it competitive? Did you, were you always competing? Yeah, yeah, I've always been competitive, man. And I don't know where that came from. I guess my, my mom and just my siblings, my little brother, little sister, always been competitive. Even to this day, my wife, she, she's competitive too. You know, I'm sure my son gonna be competitive with the rest of my future children. So that's just who we are, <laughs> that's how I am. So in sports or board games, anything. eating competition, everything, anything, really board everything. games, been plenty of fights over board games, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it's bred me into who I am today for sure. Did you have a favorite team? You might have to whisper this. Did you have a favorite team when you were growing <laughs> up? Unfortunately, yes, I did. You know, grew up a Dallas Cowboy fan, man. I hate to say it now, wow, right, but you know what, man, it's, it's good because <laughs> now being a a part of the best organization in the world. Anytime we play them, I always got an extra little chip on my shoulder, so it's fun. Do you think football gives, you kind of touched it from a young age, but as you go through your teenage years as well, does football give people direction, do you think? Gives people purpose? I think so. Uh, like I said earlier, man, I think football teaches you a lot uh, mm. of, of really life qualities, uh, regardless of if you go on to play football or play sports, like I said, working as a team, the work ethic, uh, putting the hours in, I think that translates to anything you want to do in life. Um, when did you start to well, allow yourself to dream about the NFL? And when did you kind of think, actually, this is, this is looking like it's going to happen? Yeah, I've had the dream since I was little. Uh, I've watched the NFL. I've had you know, favorite players that I've admired ever since I was young. Um, but I don't think it became a real thought until I was in college at BYU, you mm -hmm. know, started making some plays. My head coach kind of pulls me to the side, letting me know that you know, I was getting uh, looks, uh, you know, draft grades after my, my junior season. So that's kind of when things started to look, look like they were being serious. So you look at other players, inspired by other players. Was it linebackers or all positions? Uh, it was all positions, honestly. Yeah. You know, obviously, I, even though I was still, I was a Cowboys fan, I, I always uh, watched the Chargers. Being from San Diego, San right. Diego Chargers back then. Mm -hmm. uh, Ladainian Tomlinson, Antonio Gates, um, Sean Merriman. I, I, I watched and admired all those guys. Um, so I watched all positions, and I played a little offense in high school too, a little tight end man. So, of course, there, as a young kid, you want to score touchdowns too. So you watch those guys who do those things, and um, it was it was always fun, man. Do you think you could sub Kittle out for a play or two and still score a touchdown? In the yeah, NFL? man, I think I could. You know, I think uh, you, you sub me in there, man, make me, let me run a little corner around the red zone. I might be able to go up there and snag a little something. We'll see. You JJ, know, what caught yeah, touchdown Yeah, you see passes? what I'm saying, man? I'm like, I think I could. Who knows, man? We'll see. What was it like when you uh, heard your name called in the draft? Third round, 2018. How did that feel? Yeah, man, it was a dream come true, um, especially to the 49ers. Uh, throughout the draft process, they showed interest in me and uh, had some positive conversations with them. And so the fact that I got drafted to, like I said, the best organization in the league, uh, third round, 70th overall pick, um, it was so surreal. And having my family there to, to you know, love on and do those sorts of things, it was, it was a dream come true. You mentioned that a couple of times, best organization. Can you expand on that? What is it, the way they look after you guys? What makes you think that? Yeah, everything, man. Uh, you know, having won five championships here, mm -hmm. they, they obviously have a standard of winning and something that we're trying to get back to. And first class in everything that we do, whether it be, um, you know, the kitchen staff, the, the training room, you know, PR, anything, like players, mm -hmm. obviously coaches, everything we do is first class here. And there's a standard that's been set, man. And that's why I truly believe that we are the best. And, um, you know, it's only a matter of time before we get back to the mountaintop. You're one of the leaders of this team, not just the defense, but... When you come in as a rookie, did that take time to kind of, well, maybe quite literally find your voice? Because you are very vocal, but when you come in, obviously you come from a you know, young guy. Was that a process for you? Oh, a thousand percent. You know, it's not something that's given. It's, it's earned through and through. Um, you know, to be a leader and to be, you know, named a captain amongst your peers, you, 
obviously you got to have those traits about you, but at the end of the day, you got to go out there, you got to make plays on Sundays, you know, for your teammates to, to respect the type of player you are. And so that was what it was for me at first, was just trying to, you know, go out there and make it happen. Um, you know, I got the nod early to be the starter at Mike uh, as on our defense, and it was a huge honor uh, and something that held, held a lot of weight. Mm. And uh, my rookie year, I was just trying to stay afloat, man, trying to figure it out, <laughs> right? I mean, I had never played the position. I'm trying to learn as I go. Um, but I had a lot of uh, older guys and mentors that I got to look to, like Richard Sherman, like the Forrest Buckner, the Joe Staley's, like all these guys that I'm learning from in terms of how to be a leader, um, you know, and so that's something that I just kind of gradually worked towards as I kept going. What's that like when you, I assume then, are you know, passing on the play that's called by the coaches, and there's some of these veterans who have been around the league by the time you mm. come in, eight, nine, ten years, mm -hmm. and, and you're delivering that message right. to them. What was that like? Boy, it was intimidating, uh, to say the least. I mean, you, I was standing in that huddle, and I got, you know, these two trees in front of me, DeForest Buckner and Eric Armstead, man. Uh, I mentioned Richard Sherman yeah. and amongst a, a bunch of other guys who were seasoned veterans, man, at this time. And, uh, you know, as a young rookie coming out of BYU, third-round draft pick, you know, it was a lot to try to, to try to take a hold of it. But, man, I try to just do my job to the best of my ability so my teammates could count on me playing and play out, right? And it, it takes time to earn their respect. But... You know, I felt like I did that. On a very basic level, do you look back and think, think to how you might deliver a play now to then? Were you kind of almost whispering it to mm -hmm. them? <laughs> no, it was actually funny. You know, as a rookie at my, my linebacker coach, D'Amico Ryans, he told me, man, he's like, hey, you're the mic now. You know, you got to say, say the plays with conviction when you're yeah. out there. You know, say it like you mean it. Uh, you know, because there were times where I kind of just whispered the plays. But, man, he was a mic himself. So he told me, hey, man, you go in there, you you you, you know, you say it with conviction. So I was over the top about it, yelling it right to where the offense could hear me. So, you know, I had to, I had to kind of temper it down a little bit. And, yeah. and now I'm in my own now where I, you know, I, I obviously say how I say it. Game days, do you, uh, is it like almost like an alter ego when you run out of that tunnel? A thousand percent. Is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, it has to be. Um, you know, and I think off the field, I'm a nice guy, man. I'm real quiet. I, I, I'm pretty quiet, man. I'm not too, you know, up in the mix, but game day you know you got to be a savage you got right. to uh you got to be a maniac out there and uh as soon as you put that helmet on man it's just it's as if you're you know you're the gladiator out there amongst all these fans uh, it's it's such a i wish everybody could experience the joy and like the excitement of playing um in front of thousands of fans screaming your name and being out being able to go out there and just act a fool man. <laughs> you know it's just like it's <laughs> unlike it. <laughs> it's unlike anything in the world man so I, I it's a dream come true the fact that i do get to do this it's it's awesome is it like a switch or is it like a boiling kettle as you go through game day coming up to kickoff <clears throat> yeah i think it's uh it's kind of both it's, it's a both uh situation you know i think it does kind of, there is a build up there but at the same time you know, before it's time to kick off, there almost is a switch before you run out of that tunnel where mm. it's like, man, you gotta, you gotta put on the, put on the cape and go out there and be the man, right? Um, and it's something I take a lot of pride in and I love doing every single Sunday. What are the keys to, I mean, you've had over a hundred tackles every one of your years in the NFL. Mm -hmm. what, what are the keys to that, do you think, um, <clears throat> to just be around the ball? Right? Yeah, uh, I think it, it, there's a lot of things that go into it. Mm. One, uh, I mean, you have to be obviously um, you got to be healthy enough to play a, a, what, 17 game, 18 games, or not 18, 17, let's not put too many oh, in yeah. there. 17 <laughs> games, man, um, you know, obviously, and that's just regular season, then you go into the postseason, so you got to stay healthy to be able to be out there, be available, and then after that, it's about just being relentless every single play, you want right. to, like, needing to get to the football, it's like, man, it doesn't matter if I'm on the very far left side and that ball's thrown to the right, like, I got to get there no matter what that relentless mentality of making every single play, that's how you ultimately, you know, continue to rack them up. Well, I was going to ask you about technique and, and reading the game, but the great Ray Lewis once told me linebacker is want to. Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of just touched on it there, but do you find yourself reading the game better than ever as you go each year and you kind of, I mean, you're never going to know exactly where everything's mm -hmm. going, but mm -hmm. you have a much better idea now. And 100%. You can use that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's about, man, just those repetitions and experience. Uh, and I try to touch on it with the younger guys too, you know, because sometimes you can get kind of upset with yourself, like, man, I w like, why am I not getting it? And I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, like, you know, take your time, man. It, it comes with time and experience. The more you see things, the slower the game gets. And I think when people come into the league, they talk about how fast the game is, but it's not about, you know, guys running four three, four twos. It's about the speed of the game mentally, right? And like things are at a high pace and the urgency at which we play the game you know, all that gets slowed down when you know what you're doing. You've mm. seen it a thousand times, right? And so that allows me 
to take two steps in the right direction rather than two steps back to get to point A, point B. So that's the run game. Obviously, the passing game is a huge part of your uh, strengths. And, and unlike many linebackers, you don't come off the field. Do you take kind of pride in, in that? Yeah, I always have, man. I, I've always wanted to be the guy that, you know, my team and my teammates can count on playing and play out to be out there and do it all. Um, it's something I've continued to try to be a well-rounded player in all facets of my game. I think coming in, the pass game stuff was, it was a little more natural to me, yeah. having played in space a lot over at BYU. And so it was a matter of me kind of shoring up the run game stuff. And now it's about just finding those little things to get better at, whether it be pass rush or man coverage, um, you know, all those little things to ultimately just make more plays for my team. You're always looking at stuff every year, like every criti year. critical of yourself? Absolutely. Um, you know, my head coach early on in my career made a comment to the team about, whether, you know, every year you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Mm. And I took that to heart, man. I, I, every single year I take pride in making sure that I'm better than I was the year before, which is hard to do, man, when you've obviously reached a point where, you know, you're at the top of the game you know, it's, it's very small increments that you're either getting right. better or you're getting worse. So um, I'm chasing that every single day, man. It's, it's, a, it's a constant quest, and I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to thrive for it. What's it like when you get that? Obviously, people will write about you from the outside, talk about you on TV, mm -hmm. but when you get that respect from your peers, there was some very well-publicized uh, clips. Aaron Rodgers in 2020 said, you're the best there is, you're, you should be an all-pro. You get Tom Brady, Eric Weddle, all these mm -hmm. things we've seen online. But mm -hmm. let's take the Aaron Rodgers one. What does what does something like that mean to a young player who's what you've been a couple of years in the league? Yeah, him? yeah, that was my my third season in yeah. the league, um, and it meant it, it means more than he'll ever know, you know. And obviously, Aaron Rodgers is a Hall of Famer and has done gone on to do amazing things in his career. But I'm forever grateful for him for that moment because you know, as a young guy in this league who didn't really have a lot of recognition. I'm on a great football team, but you know, it takes the recognition of players who have played at such a high level to then ascend yourself in this league. And at that point, you know, I've been playing good football, but for him to recognize that and, and you know, to put it out on like a national um, moment, it, mm -hmm. it meant the world for me to be able to continue to, to ascend um, and build my confidence as a young player. And so now my, my thing is, is now that I have kind of that same sort of you know, pull. I, I try to give my flowers to whoever I see, you know, who's coming right. up in this league. It means something. Right. To let them know, like, hey, man, like, this guy's really doing it, you know, and he's he's the next one up. So uh, it's about, you know, just continuing to, you know, ascend, like, ascend the game, man, and, and rise up the younger guys. It's not all about you. It's about continuing to help the game evolve. Aaron might regret that when the Jets face you in week one. Create a monster. Hey, man, I got to let him know, you know, let yeah. him know, you know, what he created. So it, it's all love, though. Do you let people know, are you a talker on the field? Do you, and if you do, well, are you? And if you do, why? And what do I say? Yeah, well, no, I definitely don't. No, I don't need, the, I don't need all that. But, but what, what, what's the reason? Um, Can you not help yourself? Yeah, man. I, you know, I, I think uh, it's safe to say I do say a little something on the field. <laughs> and there's something about it that I'm like, it almost puts more pressure on myself to perform. Yeah. And uh, I kind of need that for, you know, like we talked about in the beginning, man, I'm a competitor at, at the highest level. And, um, you know, the more pressure I could put on myself, some guys, they fold under pressure. For me, I rise when I get more put, more pressure put on me. So it's just a little bit of me, you know, if I'm talking smack, you better be able to back it up. So that's that's kind of where that yeah, goes Yeah, otherwise from. you're going to look silly, right? There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's talk about how close you guys have been. We were having a nice conversation, so I apologize. But <laughs> yeah, sure. I did Butter have... me up to the, yeah, no, I'm I know, I know. It's all um, good. But last year's super, I mean, mm. they're all painful, I'm sure. Mm. Was last year kind of worse than the first time around? Because again, you got back <coughs> to almost the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it was different for sure. I think this one felt different. I don't know if it felt worse. It's just that, you know, my first time around, I was so young. Yeah. Not to say that I took it for granted by any means. I knew the gravity of the moment, um, but I was just a young player led by a lot of, uh, you know, influential leaders on that team in 19. But this time around, I was the guy to kind of lead the group, right? Yeah. And to hopefully get to victory. And we didn't get that. So then I felt um, like it was more on my shoulders that, you know, that we didn't get it done. And, uh, you know, it, it's a team game at the end of the mm. day. You know, we had pl plenty of plays to win the game, but I'm always going to put it on myself, put it on the, on the defense to make that last play to win it right. And uh, it's about just continuing to, to press forward, man. You got to continue to build the best team possible to give yourself a chance, even like a chance to get back there, right? It's, you're never guaranteed anything in this league. You need some luck uh, to go along with that. And yeah. so that's just what it's about. It's about climbing the mountain again. What do you like in those moments straight afterwards? Do you like get me out of here, get this confetti off me, I want to get in the tunnel. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm over it. I'm just, <laughs> just trying to get <laughs> yeah. here. You know what I'm saying, like, hey, it, it is what it is. So um, this this one was different also because I was had a baby boy on the way, you know, so I had to get over that thing quick yeah. to, to be there for my, to, yeah, 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 man. There's real life at the end yeah. of the day too. Yeah, so yeah. I had to, you know, be there for my wife. And mm. then obviously we had our baby boy and that was like the biggest blessing in the world. So it kind of took my mind off things. Obviously, from from the outside, we'll we'll say, oh, that's fuel, that's motivation. Is that a real thing? Is that like because you've been so close? Does it kind of not eat at you, but mm. is it there all the time? Yeah, it, it is. is it stays with you, man. There's scars that you earn. Literally, you earn yeah. them in this league, right? Like, I mean, that that's a moment where a lot of people don't even get to make it to a Super Bowl. Like, you can look at it as, golly, man, they've been to two and they haven't won one. It's like, not nah, for me. I'm like, I've had the opportunity to even play in two Super Bowls, regardless of winning or losing, and I earn those scars now that stay with me to allow me to continue to strive to 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 be the best and, and get to that mountaintop. And it's going to make it that much sweeter when we hold that trophy at the end. Do you dream of that? Do you think about that? 100%. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something that uh, is there. Um, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when in my mind. Mm, good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, this defense, you talk about being at the top, just with your own personal game, just making subtle changes. Mm -hmm. Is this shaping up to be, again, one of the NFL's top defenses? Because it was from the outside, certainly, it was people asked questions, didn't they, in the playoffs? How did that? You know, as a pr proud player. Yeah, I think this uh, this year for sure, that's the standard, that's the expectation is mm -hmm. to be the best every single year, um, especially for me, man. I feel like as long you – know, it's a – it's not a, an arrogant thing. It's more of a confidence thing. If yeah. I feel like as long as I'm out there, the, the standard should be that we're the top. And I'm so confident in the group that we have right now, the players around, like, in, on our defense and the depth that we have at each position, it's, it's going to be a great group. This is going to sound like a very layman's term here, but you know, like you said, how you run to the football. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've got lots of techniques, lots of calls. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just looks like you race each other to the ball <laughs> carrier. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it got to look like just a bunch of hungry dogs out there yeah. looking for a little get a little meat off that bone, man, and whatever it is. Um, so that's that's the mentality. Uh, long way to go still, of course. Uh, lots of football to be played. But Patrick Willis just went into the Hall of Fame. Great 49ers linebacker. Mm -hmm. How do you want to kind of be remembered? Is that the kind of thing you want to build a legacy here, not just a not just a period of time? Yeah, well, first, let me say that, I mean, Patrick is one of the best, if not the best to do it. You know, I put him and Ray right up there as one and two. Mm. Um, and he's so well deserved to have earned, uh, you know, the gold jacket and have him celebrate this past weekend was so cool and surreal to watch and to even have him as a friend, you know, somebody to be able to talk to is surreal for me as mm. a young guy who has have watched him and Navarro play at the highest level, it's like still surreal to me yeah. to even know him as a person. So <laughs> I'm so grateful to him. Um, and you know, my, my goal is, is always to try to be the best. And uh, whatever that looks like at the end, I'm only taking it one year at a time. And I'm, you know, I'm letting everything else at the end handle itself. All right, we enjoy watching you play, Fred. Good I luck appreciate this it, season. man. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you. you.